YouTube, this is Sonic 2 kk and today I'm going to be uh, bringing, you, bringing you another loot tutorial and the pollen count in my area is very high today and my nose is very blocked up so yeah my nose might be a little like weird uh, this tutorial and I might be sniffing a lot but anyway pushing forward and I'm going to make a loot tutorial and I plan to make a few today because I haven't made a loot tutorial in about three days and that is a disgrace. And I wanted to do one at least every day, or at most every day, but at least every other day. And I didn't because um, just stuff that I haven't been able to do it. But anyway, today it is a loot tutorial. I'm actually going to teach you something very, very, very valuable in loot today. And wait until you see what it is. So, get started. Get into your code editor, get into your interactive layer prompt or whatever you're using, and let's get started. So what you want to do is, well, just listen for a, a little bit. Say you had a lot of code. Say you had code you wanted to uh, use a hundred times. Say you wanted to print out, hello friend, 20 times to the screen. Right? Well, uh, you want to do that a hundred times, actually. Instead of just going print... Hello, friends, and you, you spell it wrong, and you have to keep typing that. You know, if you're in the prompt, you can do that, but you know, then you see the command, and it's like, oh, it's boring. But what if I told you you could do it without printing your code a hundred times? You could do it in three lines of code. You'd probably call me crazy, but. Just wait, I'm going to teach you about a thing called... Loops! And loops are extremely useful in programming. Even in any language, there should be loops. And I'm thinking of it, and I think every language has a loop. At least one kind of loop, maybe SQL doesn't, but... We're not going to get into that. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, loops can print out, or they can execute... A block of code. A block of code is like in a function, and all those instructions they're called a block of. They're called a. That's a block of code, a block of instructions. So a, uh, a loop can print that. Can uh, take those instructions and uh, execute those instructions as many times as you specify in the loop. And there are. Think. Three types of loops in Lua, I'm going to say. Yeah, I think there's three types of loops, but for some reason I think there's a fourth one, but I don't think there is. But I just have a feeling there is. But I'm going to teach you about the most common one and probably the most useful one, uh, and it's called a for loop. So you type four. I'm just going to type it out. Uh, Why did I just type it out? Because it's going to be pretty confusing. Now, this, think of this as a new lane. I just can't put a new lane in here for some reason. It wasn't letting me. I tried to do it a few times before this tutorial. And it didn't work. So, we do that. I printed out hello world six times. Now, why did I do that? Forget about four for a second. Just pretend that isn't there. Put your thumb over the screen and pretend four isn't there. So, what we're saying is... Alright, we're making a variable. A temporary variable that's going to be clear. That's going to be deleted. After we run the loop called i, and uh, it's going to be equal to one, and you add one to i until you reach six. So you do this: you print out, you print out "Hello World" six times until i gets to six. So i, the temporary variable i, it's going to be deleted after the loop is run. Uh, is equal to one, and we're going to add one to it until we reach six. And why, whenever we add 1 to i, or whenever this loop is run, so whenever we run the loop, 1 is going to get added to i. We're going to add 1 to i. And that's going to uh, print out hello world 6 times. So whenever it's equal to 1, it prints this out. Actually, as a better example, what we could do is we could print out the value of i. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. i is equal to 1, then it's equal to 2, then it's equal to 3, then it's equal to 4, then it's equal to 5, and then it's equal to 6. So what are we doing? Just one more time. Um, 
this just ends the loop by the way, you should know that. Um, so we make a temporary variable called i, so for, just really just type 4 in there whenever you're making a for loop. Uh, i is equal to 1, i will be deleted after we run the loop and after everything's done. Um, and then until i reaches 6, do this. And whenever we run it once, we're going to check is i equal to 6? No, add 1 to it. Um, is i equal to two, uh, 6 now, whenever it's 2? Nope. Keep going, is it equal Alright, is it equal to 6? It's 3 now? Nope. Is it equal to 4? Nope. Is it equal to 5? Nope. Is it equal to 6? Yes. And, now that, that's a, a good loop, but, um, say you wanted to, um, add, like, a certain amount to the loop. I think what you can do, I, I haven't did this in a while because I never do it, um, Yep, if you add another thing here, this says add 2 to it each time. So, uh, whenever it's 1, we add 2 to it to get 3, and then we add 2 to it to get 5, but if we add 2 to it, we get 7, which automatically ends the loop. And you can put whatever number you want here, you could even put 6 here, uh, if you wanted. Then you just get 1. <laughs> and the numbers here, they don't have to be 1 to 6, and this doesn't have to be called I, this could be called uh, John if you wanted. I think. Um, oh. Um, yeah, nil, 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 nil. Uh, because we're not, this is, this has to be called John. And we could do that. So, just, this is a variable, really. And this is a temporary variable, so, um, yeah, this gets deleted after you run the loop, and this is a temporary variable, so basically the same rules apply to this as it would a normal variable. Um, how much time have we got left? I've got plenty of time, so let me teach you about another type of loop called the well. Oh. Uh, I say it funny because of my uh, accent from where I'm from. Um, but, let me teach you about the while loop, which is, if you can't understand my accent, while, I suppose is how you would say I, I don't know. I just say it funny. And th this one is really, really, really simple. It's almost as common as the for loop, but not as common. Uh, I don't use it very often. I don't really use loops very often in programming, to be honest, but... You should. They are very useful and they save a lot of time. So while this is basically red, so hold on. Variable called i and set it equal to and then no 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 i is equal to ten. Just that was way too many numbers. And then we type while i is equal i i is less. Oh, 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 I need to teach you about something first, and those are called comparison operators, and comparison operators, really this means, is a number greater to, or no, uh, yeah, I'm going to teach comparison operator, so, we know about the assignment operator, this ascends, this ascends something to a variable, but if we want to check to see if something is equal to a number, or uh, a string, and then we do this. So if we type uh, when uh, is equal to ten, do print i. Oh, you can't do that in the right. So what this did is it says, all right, look, while i is equal. To 10, do these instructions, and we print i, and we add 1 to i. This says i is, e the value of i is equal to, whatever i is equal to now, plus 1. So, basically this means i is equal to 11. And we could just do y equals 11, or i equals 11, sorry. And then that just wouldn't run. Uh, that's why you do i equals i plus 1. And that's what most people do. That is uh, the most common thing to do. Yeah. Anyway. Um. 
So what we can do is now we will set i equal to one, and we're gonna teach you about. I'm gonna teach you about another one called the less than operator, because this is the uh, equal to operator. Remember that, and then this is the less than operator. So. Oh, forgot the I. You probably saw that. So, what did this do? This says, while I is less than 10. So, while the, ver the value of I is less than the number 10, do this. And what do we do? We printed out the value of I and we added 1 to I every time the loop ran. And, right, so, uh, I was equal to 1. So, you printed that, right? Uh, then, so we ran the loop, i, what's i equal to? i is equal to 1, so that's less than 10, so do this, oh we're going to add 1 to the i, so i is now 2, i is 2, is it less than 10? Uh, nope, so do this, and we keep, we kept doing that until we reach 9, because whenever we reach 10, is i less than 10? Nope, so we're not running the loop. And the next one I'm going to teach you about is the less than or equal to operator. And this one's very interesting, and this one's very common. Hold on, how much time have we got left? Um, yeah, we have a little time left. So, the less than or equal to operator. And basically, this means if something's less than or equal to something, and if we did uh, while... We need, can I need to rush here? No, i equals 1. Now we got up to 10, because is i less... Than 10, yep, until we reach the 10. Is i less than 10? Is i less than 10? Nope, but is it equal to 10? Yes. And then we have the greater than operator, which you can probably tell what that does. That says, is i uh, greater than 10? Which, in this case, it probably is. But, this is probably good. Yep, that's an infinite loop. Oh, crap, that's an infinite loop. Oh, crap. I knew that was going to happen. That's an infinite loop. That's one thing you need to watch out for. Infinite loops. If you don't give something for the loop to stop. Uh, then you're uh, kind of screwed. Really. So. I made an infinite loop. And to get out of this infinite loop. You hold in, you hold in control and press C. And then just. Clear all of that. I'm, I, I'm still in loop. That's awesome. So. um, Yeah. That's what the greater than, and then there's greater than or equal to. You know what that does. It just tests if something's greater than or equal to 10. Um, and this will probably give it something to stop at, but I'm going to set i equal to 1. Um, and this will probably still make an infinite loop, I don't know. No. Nope. Yeah, because i isn't greater than or equal to 10. So... Those are the conditional operators, and how much time we got left? Right, I'm gonna try and rush this really, really fast. So, um, the do repeat until this. No, I'll save that for the next tutorial. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.